G'day everyone, today we're going to have a quick look at EasyNest uh, with regard to the ATP and for the NROUTE users this is the same sort of area. Now first of all we go into our ATP. The, probably the first element to look at is the Define Layers tab. Now we have the layer name, which is the layer name as per Cabmaster. Strategy, the strategy that we've assigned to it. We take a little bit of particular care as per our strategy video with naming it. We can also assign a small part strategy if required. Now the design depth is talking about how deep was this strategy designed at, which obviously you match together. If it is 16.2 deep, then put it at 16.2 deep, which then makes this one at 16.2 as well. The next tick along here, the use depth, means that we're using the depth that we're gaining from the parts, like from Cabmaster. The next column is to talk about toolpath. We want to create our toolpath. Nest together is the next one which we want to do. Nest separately is not what we want to do, so you don't often find it ticked on. And OP is for outputting. We do want output. Now, if you find you're not able to find a hinge layer or something, you tend to click on the use parts once you've, or list files, once you've got some parts in there. So if you're missing any, the quick way to check is you slide the slide down to the bottom and hit use parts. If anything was missing, it would have come in underneath it. But at this moment, that one, we have all of the layers that is known to that job. Now, moving along, oh, we can also remove layers or clear all of them. Now, moving on to the ordering and nesting. Uh, in the priority order, this is the priority we want to give to, to items. When, we, when EasyNest has a choice of what should come first, this is where we tell it what should come first. Should the tool come before the strategy, which will be before the pass, object, and layer? We can also then break it down further when we're talking about the tools. What is supposed to have strategy uh, uh, priority over another? For example, the drill, we should probably do all of our drilling before we come to our routing. So here, I just slide these parts up. So now we're dealing with our drilling before our routing. Same sort of effect with regard to our strategies. So when it comes across the strategies, it does drill strategies before it does offset females, which would be before offset males. Now, whilst I've just done that, that does not mean that is the way to do it at all times. Every single circumstance can have differences. The small parts first is what we use to be able to determine whether we do do the small parts first with regard to the small parts strategies. If you have a small parts strategy, you need to be utilizing small parts first so that it deals with it first. It could be the completely the same strategy as the big parts. It doesn't matter. It just means it occurs first. It'll cut it away before the vacuum pressure loses for cutting out more parts. Maintain part grouping is to keep, say, for example, all of a floor cabinet together if possible. Otherwise, if you deselect that, it'll just put them wherever it can in the mixture to fit. The plate size is pretty straightforward, but this is the realistic size that we call the plate. This is the actual width of it. You may notice my ATP is currently called 24 by 12 by 16. That's just the generic name, but this is the actual plate size that I'm declaring. The surface of the plate can change depending on the machine, so some are top of plate, some are bottom. Each individual machine is different. Grain direction talks about which way the grain is going on that material. Commonly it's along the X axis. Not normally it's along the Y, but depending on what you're doing, sometimes changing it to Y can create the right effect for you. Angle step <clears throat> is related to how far in a rotation a part will turn to find its best nest. In this case, it's going to rotate every 90 degrees till it finds its step. You could even reduce it down to say 5 degrees, which means it'll go in 5 degree increments. Not the ideal for square parts, but if you're doing sign making or something like that, that would be an appropriate scale to get it to nest in best. Multi-layer is regarding to creating multiple sheets of nests in one hit. Otherwise, it will actually just do one sheet nested and put all the excess parts off to the right-hand side. Use holes when engaged will allow you to nest inside the cutouts if the piece will fit, taking advantage of any of the scraps inside pieces. Be careful with trying to do this if you're utilizing the layer called text, because sometimes the text is actually sitting inside that space. Though then again, some customers are utilizing that text layer to do a different part. With regard to the gaps and the margins, the mar gaps we never go below two. They're to do with the lead-ins and lead-outs. We quite often lead in and lead out on a one millimeter away angle, so we don't want to get closer than two mil to another part. The margin can be changed. That's just purely on the outside of the board. 
it actually talks about how far the tool's center is located inside the board. At five mil margin, the center of the tool you're using is located five mil in. The directional arrows here is to talk about how to push the priority of the nest. If you prioritize it down to the bottom left corner, or if you prioritize it to the left hand side, or the, the upper edge, that is where you set those priorities. Parts list is where we bring in our parts. It is uh, interesting to note here, this is the part name. We can deselect everything or select everything or individually tick things on or off. That is a very useful tool. The width, length and thickness comes from Cabmaster, but as some people will be aware, this does not include machining alterations from Cabmaster. This is the generic size. The material type, it talks about its material name and its thickness. The unit number that it's applicable to, that was with those multi, uh, with regard to the maintain part grouping, it'll try and keep the units together. You can also up the quantities of things if you needed to make changes there. This allow rotate, if you have a material that is grained, it will have that automatically off and it will automatically give you a particular rotation according to Cabmaster. Cabmaster already has programmed the direct rotations. This rotation allowing will allow it to rotate it any which way that it needs to achieve the best nest. Across to the right here, I've never had to use rect. I don't exactly know how to explain it. We'll probably cover that later down the track on another video. Select files actually allows us to bring in individual DXFs to do or MPRs. It's a little bit like the parts list except that it's individual little pieces. With regard to setup, we can turn on or off our output and our labels and our printouts, depending on what we want to do. The ATP will save our preferences, which is generally to create output and create labels, but I quite often find it handy to turn off those two to just check out what a nest is doing. The output path is normally saved to C drive machining out, and we normally change the output file name per job so that we know what it is when it gets over to the machine, it can be identified. Everyone would have a different printer, and everyone would have different label setups, but this is where you'll see your label setups. From there, it's just a case of processing once you've got your parts ready, so we'll do that now. There is a nest with the parts we've asked for, so that is the conclusion of the ATP. Thanks for listening today.